If you want to prevent your Subaru from blowing up, there's just a few things that you need to do. And one of those things is installing this. This little doohickey right over here is called the Get a Dom Cylinder 4 Cooling Mod. Now, some of you guys might already know what this is. For those of you who don't, I'm going to quickly go ahead and explain what this is, what it does, and why you need it. All right, so I think we can all agree that these motors are definitely not built to perfection. Whether you want to modify it or keep it stock, there's a lot of issues that arise with these motors. But luckily, this little mod can solve a huge issue that can possibly prevent your motor from blowing up. All right, so I'm going to try to explain this as simple as I can. We all know that your motor needs cooling. Your motor needs to stay cool. You do not want your motor overheating because that is always going to be bad news. Unfortunately, though, there is a massive design flaw with these motors. So whether you have a 2008 or a 2018, your super motor more than likely likely has this issue. Now, since the boxer motors are sideways, we have coolant feeding through this side and then also this side. Now, this is going to be cylinder number one, cylinder number two, cylinder number three, and then finally cylinder number four. So on this side over here, we have coolant flowing through cylinder number one and then into cylinder number three. And then after cylinder number three, it has two other ways to escape. So the coolant flow on this side is pretty good. You constantly have coolant just flowing through. Coming over here to this side, this is the side with all the issues. Now coolant goes into cylinder number two and then flows into cylinder number four. But unlike cylinder number three, we don't have much flow over here. There's only one way of escape. Whereas over here on cylinder Cylinder number three, we had two ways for coolant to escape. So cylinder number four is always going to be the hottest cylinder throughout the entire motor because it has the least amount of coolant flow. And because of lack of coolant flow, cylinder number four always gets the hottest, which is why it's usually the first one to start getting problems like rod knock or ring land failure. Now we've all seen the internet memes about super ring land failure and rod knock, but let me tell you guys, most of the time that starts with cylinder number four because cylinder number four is always the one getting tortured the most. Now, since that is a massive issue today, we're going to go ahead and fix that massive issue with the get a Dom cylinder four cooling mod. This little mod will help cylinder four see more flow in coolant and see lower temperatures so it doesn't overheat. Thankfully, we have a lift now so I can get underneath the car and show you guys exactly how to install this thing. Since we're gonna be tapping into the cooling system, we're gonna to have to go ahead and drain out all our coolant. Now, I would definitely recommend getting new coolant. Do not reuse your old coolant. It's a bad idea, just don't do it. Get yourself some coolant straight from Subaru. Apparently, the Subaru brand coolant is way better for our head gasket, so we don't have any head gasket issues, so definitely go with that. Let's go ahead and drain out the coolant, and uh, hopefully we don't make a big mess like I do every single time I mess with coolant. Literally every single time I mess with coolant, I end up getting coolant all over myself and all over the floor, and I make a big mess. No matter how well I try to do things, I always end up making a mess with coolant. But now that we have a lift and we have this little thingy majig, I forgot what it's called. I'm really hoping that I just don't end up making a mess like I do every single time. Draining the coolant really shouldn't be too hard. There's like a little Phillips head at the corner of the radiator. So you just go ahead, loosen that up. All right, it's not coming out yet. Put that to the side where you're not gonna lose it. I completely took out the drain, but it's still not dripping out any coolant. And that is because we still have our rod cap on. Once I just even twist the rod cap, coolant is just gonna start just pissing out of there. So I'm pretty sure I positioned that pretty well. And loosen, just loosen that bad boy. And boom, there we go. Look at that. Look at that, dude. We're not making a mess. That's huge. Fun fact, I just picked this up a few hours ago and I've always wanted these. Dude, it makes life so easy. I thought that maybe the car being on the lift would make it a little bit easier to film, but it's a really, really tight space. So it might be a little hard to see, but right there, you guys see that? Now to locate exactly where we're gonna be plugging the cylinder four cooling mod into, you're gonna wanna go on the left side and try to go from behind the wheel. If you look from back here, it's a lot easier to see. So I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see that. You guys see that right over there? That little plug right over there, my hand is so shaky. <laughs> that little plug right over there, it's a 12 millimeter hex. That is what we have to take out and that is what we're gonna be plugging the cylinder four cooling mod into. Let me show you guys how I got there. You go from behind the axle and then around the steering shaft and then boom, right over there. I just wanna go ahead and confirm that it is in fact a 12 millimeter hex. Now obviously getting to that is gonna be a little difficult, so I'm just gonna put a bunch of extensions and then come in with a breaker bar and try to break that open. Oh, that's no, on pretty tight. All right, come on. And it wasn't too bad taking this off. Oh, oh sick, we don't have coolant coming out of it. Sweet. And then just like that, here is the plug that came out of there. So basically this is going to get replaced with this. Let's go ahead and open this up. So inside the cylinder for cooling mod, we have, we got a bunch of hose clamps so you don't have to buy your own. We have a little metal T fitting. The metal doesn't seem too cheap, so that's good. 
And then lastly, we have this hose with threads on the end of it. These threads are gonna plug into exactly where we took this little plug out of. But I think I paid close to 70 bucks for everything. And honestly, all this isn't really anything special. I mean, you can run out to the parts store, get a bunch of hose clamps, a T-fitting and a hose. And you just gotta figure out what threads these are because I have no idea what threads these are. But to save money, you can definitely make your own DIY kit. And I was gonna do that, but I couldn't figure out for the life of me what threads these were. So I just ended up getting the Get A Dom kit. It came with everything I need, so I figured why not. We have our new hose loosely threaded into the head. Now, we're gonna locate exactly where this is gonna tee into. So if you literally just look up, you'll see two hoses right over here. And I believe that these are for the heater core. We're gonna tap into the left hose. I know it's a little hard to see, but bear with me guys. We're gonna tap into the left hose right over there. So we're gonna make a little cut in between there and then put our T fitting in. And then the other side of our T fitting is gonna go right here. So it's gonna kind of just loop like this. You wanna make sure it's not gonna be too close to the steering shaft, but this is just gonna kind of loop up and connect like that. Now it's time that we're gonna actually make the cut so that we can put the T fitting in there. Now what you're supposed to do is use some like hose cutting tool or whatever we ain't fancy out here. So I'm just gonna be using a knife and I'm gonna try to make the cut as clean as I possibly can. If you have a hose cutting tool, awesome. If not, a blade should work just fine. Cut right into there, wow, this is, all right. Oh, cutting into this is gonna be a little harder than I thought. All right, for a second thought, I probably should have just gotten a hose cutting plier but I can't leave now because my car is completely out of coolant. So I'm stuck here right now. Oh, oh, coolant's coming. Oh shit, oh shit. Oh man. Uh, oh shit. All right, see I pre-planned. I had a feeling there was gonna be coolant in there that was gonna drip out. So I put this under here. Luckily we didn't make a mess. I think I got a little, I got a little bit, I got some a little bit over my arms, but it's not that big of a deal. So far, this has been the cleanest coolant related job I've ever done, which is, I'm really happy about. But just be careful, cause uh, there's coolant in there. Have something to catch it. You just want the T-fitting as a union for the hoses that you just cut. Take your little seven mil and then go ahead and tighten her down. None of that by any means was actually difficult. It was just a huge pain in the butt. Now, I already went ahead to AutoZone and bought a new set of crow's feet, or crow's foot, or a bunch of crow feet, a bunch of crow feet, or wait, crow feet sounds right, but crow foot wrench set. So I got a brand new set from AutoZone right before I started doing this, but unfortunately, I needed something just a little bit bigger than 7 8 so I ended up having to use just an adjustable wrench. Apparently you're supposed to use like the 24 hour gasket maker. I just got this one minute stuff because ain't nobody got time for that. Boys, I am so hyped because we can finally start drifting this thing because we have officially installed the cylinder four cooling mod. Those drone shots were completely unnecessary, but I'm just so excited to finally have my drone again. You guys might have seen a few videos ago, your boy here flew his drone into a freaking tree. It was a really, really hard fall, so one of the legs broke off, but somehow, I managed to open this up and fix it myself. And now the drone is flying perfectly fine, which I'm really excited for. It's kind of like a mixed feeling because now that we got this warehouse, a part of me like wants to fly it because like we have all the space in the world to fly a drone. It's also kind of scary because we have the lift over there. So if it hits the lift, it'll just land onto a car and totally scratch up the car or something like that. Looking around, there's just like a lot of things that I could fly the drone into. And uh, I'll be honest with you guys real quick. Your boy here isn't that great at flying drones. If that wasn't obvious enough, I said it now. Somehow I managed to fly a drone into like almost anything. I flew the drone into my brand new carbon fiber hood and right there left a bunch of scratches. Hopefully that buffs out. I think it might buff out. I don't know yet. But all that aside now, now it's time to go ahead and actually burp the cooling system. If you guys don't have this, I would definitely recommend getting it. You can pick this up at like AutoZone. It's a 
No Spill Coolant Filling Funnel Kit. No Spill Coolant Filling Funnel Kit. That's a long name. This thing makes it so much easier. And then we also have some Subaru Long Life Coolant and then some distilled water. I'm just using distilled water right now to make sure that there aren't any leaks because I'd rather leak water than coolant. Doesn't seem like we're leaking anywhere. I wanted to make sure that little Phillips head drain plug was tight, but uh, I guess it is. A few moments later. Oh my bro, what the hell? Mike, I just, uh, I just, oh my God. How do I even explain what just happened, dude? My camera was sitting on my tripod and I was adjusting the tripod to, you know, get the cold start cause the cold start in the warehouse is insane. And my camera just, fell off the tripod and oh my god that's a piece of the lens oh god oh no let me try to show you guys exactly what broke oh my god that is tri oh dude hold on let me you guys see that you guys see that look at the camera lens i mean the lens is still working because like i can still zoom in zoom out and it still focuses and all that but i swear it's like every single video i break something like you guys literally watch me break something in every single video Yeah, so uh, I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but uh, the camera's having a really hard time focusing and I'm gonna have to get this camera fixed ASAP. I don't understand why I have to break something literally every single video. <laughs> it is what it is, I'm not gonna upset myself, I'm not gonna let this small thing upset or ruin my entire day, so. Let's check the coolant temp now. It's at 185 degrees, so the thermostat should have opened up by now. No coolant leaks, which is a really good sign. That means that we don't have any leaks. The hose clamps are on pretty tight, so this car is ready to rock and roll. By rock and roll, I don't actually mean that we're gonna go drift it tonight. I mean that this car is getting ready for dino day. If my memory serves me right, I think we have two more things that we need to install on this car before dino day. After those two things, boys, this car is going to be insane. It's gonna be different than any other car or every other STI hatch that you've seen on YouTube. This thing is about to be real gnarly. Slowly but surely, this car is coming together. My little brother told me that this thing looks like a Copart rebuild and I can't get that out of my head now. And now every time I see it, it looks like a Copart rebuild. Also, one more thing I totally forgot to mention to you guys, but yeah, we threw on a carbon fiber hood. <laughs> I know that right now it doesn't exactly match the rest of the car, but just wait on it, boys. We have some pretty big things planned for it. Cylinder number four cooling mod is officially complete. This is something that we really needed to do before we start bashing on the car because cylinder number four is like the first one to go whenever it comes to rod knock or ringland failure. So this is something like crucial to do to your Subaru, especially the EJ motor. I don't know if it's with the FA motors, but if you guys have an EJ motor, you guys definitely need to hop on this so you guys don't blow your ringlands or blow or whatever. I don't want to blow my motor. I don't want you guys to blow your motor. So definitely go ahead and uh, install this mod. It's really easy. It's really not that hard. I am super exhausted and I'm going to go ahead and start editing this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. I still haven't fully decided on a name for this thing yet. I'm thinking of Julia or Jules, but if you guys have any better suggestions, definitely let me know down in the comments because this thing is still nameless. Please and thank you.